Hello good people of the internet and welcome to another Magic the Gathering video. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking probabilities, specifically how you can use a hypergeometric distribution calculator to help you make data-driven decisions in your deck construction choices. So what is a hypergeometric distribution calculator? Well, it's a calculator that helps you calculate a hypergeometric distribution calculation. Now, there's a lot of information that dives much deeper than I'm going to out there on the internet. And if you want to read more about that, I suggest you just do a Google search. And there's a lot of information out there as well as how it pertains to Magic the Gathering. But I'm not a math expert. I'm not going to do a deep dive. I just want to make you guys aware that this is out there and give you a quick tutorial on how you can use it uh, to come up with some probabilities yourself. So let's take a look. Um, what you're going to want to do is go to StatTrek.com and on the left hand side click Hypergeometric. Now one of the scenarios that you can use is how many lands should you run. And one of the ones that it's not as discussed that often anymore but it was, all, it was discussed at one time should just kind of mid-range run 24 or 25. Now if you're not going to run any deck selection like Sarah Visions you should definitely run 25. And you could even make an argument, even if you're running two or three Serum Visions, you might still run around 25. Now, personally, I, I chose to go a little, I guess, a little more on the variance route and go 24 lands with three Serum Visions. I know some of my colleagues, like Larry Swayze and Jason Clark, still run 25 with two Serum Visions. So it's kind of up to you, but let's look at what the probability actually says. Um, so what population size, that's going to be the number of cards in a deck. So in this case, we want to see what is the probability that we're going to draw three in an opening seven. So a population is a 60 card deck. Now if you have a 25 land hand, there's 25 successes, 25 hits, 25 lands in the deck, so you put 25, and in this case sample size is going to be 7. We're going to look at 7. We're going to sample 7 off the top. And what is the chances that there's going to be 3 in that opening 7? Well if we have 25 lands in the deck, that number comes out to be greater than or equal to, or at least, 62%, 62.5%. So a good tick over half the time, which is what we want. Uh, now, how does that number change if it's 24? Well, if we put 20, if it's a 24 land deck, put 24 here, hit calculate, it is 58.7. So 58.7 versus 62, so 62.5, so just under 4%, 3.8, I think, 3.8%. So it's really not that much of a difference. You'd have to play a lot of games, I think, for that to to come up. Um, but that's how you use the calculator. And and I've, and I found it very, very useful because I don't like always want to take just guesses. It's nice to be able to look at some actual math. Now let's talk about some other scenarios that we could use this calculator in. There was a recent comment uh, by Julian on my Facebook page regarding Goblin Guide triggers. And essentially what he was saying is maybe you don't want to fetch with the Goblin Guide trigger on the stack because you're taking one land out of the deck and you're reducing the chance to draw lands. Now, if you want to read the whole reply, pause it here, but I have my reasonings and why I think you actually just want to fetch prior. The main ones are you don't actually want to draw the land that you want to get into play, uh, especially if you only have one of it, like, say, Sacred Foundry, because then you're going to be forced, if that's the land you didn't play, you're going to be forced to shock yourself. So you want to take one with the fetch and guarantee that you're going to get that land in play and be able to untap with it the following turn. Um, but also, if he flips a spell you want to keep, then you don't want to you don't want to be forced to not fetch so that you can draw it and then have to take additional damage next turn in the form of fetching and shocking yourself and giving them a free bolt. So those are the those are kind of my reasonings, but let's look at what does the math actually say? So in this scenario, we had 53 cards left in the deck because I had drawn my opening seven. Um, I had two lands in that opening seven. So rather than have the normal 24, we only had 22 lands left in the deck. Now our sample size is going to be one because Goblin Guide lets us look at one card. And the number of successes in that sample is going to be one. So what is the chance, the probability, that if there's 22 lands left in our 53 card deck, that Goblin Guide is going to flip a land? This is if I don't fetch. Still 22 left. It is 41.5%. Now, if I do fetch, we can look at that probability because there's going to be 21 lands left in the deck because I take one out with a fetch land. And it goes from 41.5 to 39.6. So that's less than 2%. So by 
by not fetching, you are increasing the chances you're going to draw lands, but by an almost ins by an insignificant amount. But what you're doing is you're sort of you're trading this very small probability increase to draw a land for potentially a lot of awkwardness in getting the lands in play that you want. Awkwardness meaning you may have to fetch and shock on that turn, and I don't think you want to do that. But that aside, this is how you would use the hypergeometric distribution calculator to figure out what those probabilities are. Um, see if I can think of any other scenarios. Here's a common one. If you have a 60-card deck and you have four cards in it, say Geist to St. Trap, what are the chances that you're going to see one in your opening seven? It's not as high as you might think. Um, oh, sorry. Number of six, sample size is actually seven. Number of successes is one. It is just under 40%. So even if you have four of, less than half time are you going to see that card in your opening hand. So anyway, guys, like I said, just kind of a quick high-level overview on how to use the hypergeometric calculator and how you can use it to generate some data of your own and help you make decisions regarding your deck. Uh, I hope this was useful. Um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, and if you want to engage with me in a little more detail, follow my Facebook page. Uh, you can click Great Nate underneath this video, and there's a link on the channel banner or whatever it is to Facebook. So, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, girls, and have a great day.